This week on iOS Today, we took a look at iPad OS. It's brand new from Apple. Still a public beta. I'm not recommending everybody install it, but if you're curious, what's coming next for the iPad? Stay tuned. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by Grammarly. Grammarly is a communication tool that helps people improve their writing to be mistake-free, clear, and effective. Start writing confidently by going to Grammarly.com slash hot and get 20% off a Grammarly premium account today. I'm so excited. iOS 13, actually Mac OS Catalina also came out both ahead of time. They weren't scheduled to come out till July. I think that shows that Apple has the confidence that these are stable enough for you and me to use. If you go, if, you're, if you own an iPad, particularly an iPad Pro, Mm -hmm. uh, or a late model Mac uh, computer, go to beta.apple.com. You can enroll. In both cases, you'll have to download a little file. In the case of the uh, iOS devices, iPad and iPhone, you'll download a little profile, which you'll install. And then you'll go to update, and all of a sudden, it'll say, hey, there's a new update for your iPad or your iPhone. <clears throat> I did not do it on my phone. I think my phone, I'm going to keep it in uh, non-beta state just because I want it to be reliable. And right. as you saw already, there's some apps that just don't work on iOS 13. So this is something you do on your extra iPad. Uh, I did it because I think we need to cover it. Uh, Micah, you did it a long time ago with, with I think, the somewhat less stable uh, developer version. Yeah, it's well, it's what's fascinating to me. The first beta is usually the one that gives you a lot of issues. Right. And I found that the first beta... Uh, for iOS at least, was more stable than oh. the second beta. Oh, funny. Um, <laughs> there have been a lot more bugs in the second beta. Um, that None have been showstoppers, which is nice. You know, I've not run into any big issues. And uh, all of the apps that I use are working. Some of them are a little buggy depending, but have not had any like simply won't launch apps, which is nice. Right. Um, but certainly, yeah, this this is something that I, you know, I always, every year, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and then I end up doing it. Can't, can't help it. I got to do it. it. I got to do it. I got to try it. I got to know. Well, and for um, me, the most interesting thing was not just iOS 13, but iPad OS. iPad OS. And as somebody who loves my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I mean, I really do love it. Uh, but I always felt like the hardware way exceeded the iOS capabilities. That the iOS was mm -hmm. designed for the iPhone. So this is this is to me the but the real reason for my upgrade and interest is I want my iPad to be more than just a big iPhone. And I think there's some right. really nice stuff in here. So let me show you uh, in, uh, right away one of the very first things, which is all of a sudden you you'll notice immediately the icons are smaller and the density is higher. So mm -hmm. that is huge. We have 30, room for 30 icons or folders uh, per page. And the front page, this is really awesome. I have 24 icons on here. And I have a column on the left, still room for a column on the left, which holds what used to be um, my uh, notifications page. Now is a column on the left. Now you can turn that on or off. You don't have to do it that way. There's a, a little switch effect if I go to edit that says keep on host screen. If I turn that off, then we go back. Let's see. Let me do it again. Oh, maybe I can't go back. You should be able to. I, I think you swipe it. A, well, but you did swipe it. Oh, I that. turned it off. Oh, Let's leave it. I wonder if it's bug. It might oh, be I have to say done. No. You well, did do that, though. Yeah. Might be buggy right now. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> Remember, you should be able to turn it on. Well, now it says it's off. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Turn it on and off to make that uh, go away if you don't like having it there. However, I like it. Now, there's something else to point out, which I didn't know, and you explained to me. And I'll go back into edit. You've still got in your Today View, you've got <clears throat> the same choices you had before. You've got widgets, uh, widgets you've installed, widgets you haven't yet installed. Of course, as you can see, there's a lot far more that I haven't installed. I've been very careful about curating what widgets are in here. These are the things you... And you might want to even do this more now that this is on your front page. But you're able to pin some widgets. How many can you pin? Uh, I have like not two. tried to reach the maximum. I think oh, two. Oh, it's only two. Yeah. Huh. So that, the idea there I think is great. And I thank you for showing me that. When you swipe all the way down on this left column, the widgets you've pinned will 
always be there on your home screen. So I chose uh, calendar and weather. You're always going to have, and this is huge, date and time. That's always a part of it. So you can, you know how I have my clock here so I can see see what time it is? And it's hard to read. I can move my clock away. Unfortunately, yeah. and I'm hoping Apple will do this, I would move my clock away if, as it does on Android, tapping the time would open the clock. But it doesn't do that, unfortunately. Uh, tapping the widgets opens the appropriate you know, uh, application. App, yeah. But uh, Apple, just a little tip. This is what happens on Android on, in most cases on the launcher. If you tap the time or date, you open your either your uh, date, your clock, or your calendar. So I'm leaving the clock and calendar there. But I have to say, it's only a matter of time before I, I hide away my calendar and clock. Yeah, because you've got, yeah. you got it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Plus swipe up and you can see the rest of them. So they're, I think it's nice. They're hidden. You know, they don't take up uh, attention. It's not that the, the space is there anyway, but, but they don't take up attention. Uh, but you can but you can get to them very quickly. I think this is a very important improvement. Uh, much better Agreed. use of the real estate. Now, that's not going to happen on uh, on uh, iPhone. That's an iPad OS feature. The one thing, though, I haven't gotten yet, <clears throat> you know, sophisticated about is the multitasking. So can you walk me through some of the yeah. things I can do here? Uh, so one of the things is that you probably know about slide over. That's where an app comes uh, over from the side. So while well, we've got to be in an app. Oh, well, um, let me, so let me, let me be in an app first. Okay, so I'm in uh, OneNote. And actually, uh, Notepad would be a good one to be in. And then I can... Sl I can... Sl I can... Sl well, you should Maybe be not OneNote. Uh, let's, uh, let's do an Apple app. How about... Uh, see, you see, I don't have a whole... <laughs> <laughs> let's do... Notes? This is... Uh, yeah, notes would be good. So let me open up notes and then, cause we know that'll work. Gallery view, smarter search, shared folders. Okay. I like that. So now I slide. See, I'm really bad <laughs> at this. Okay. Uh, swipe up from the bottom, okay. uh, so that you launch your, yeah. Now, now take, yeah, take one. Oh, I can uh, put something. Let's put Safari. Oh, yeah, oh over there. there you go. So maybe cause now I never had side anything. By side. Yeah. That's side by side. So go ahead and grab oh, Top okay. right or the top right, that little yeah, and then take it and then drop that. Now right it's a there. window, yeah, which means I can drag it around. Unfortunately, yes, exactly. it snaps left or right, right? It's it uh, it does either go left or right, um, but you can now use multiple apps in in slide over so that that way it's it's easy to get to the different ones that you use most regularly. Mm -hmm. So you can um, see this would be a really good example here. I'm writing a a, a kind of a blog post of. Uh, it's all the things on my Mac. And if I wanted to, I could use then uh, a Safari to open up the information and then copy the information from here. And you're going to you're gonna help me do that. From copy it. Can I just drag it? <clears throat> yeah. So don't, don't, yeah, there you go. So you don't have to go to the copy uh, option. You Look just at drag that. It. Look at that. Now, so this is a really nice way to do some research. I think that's really fantastic. Um, uh, and then go ahead and tap back onto the Safari thing okay. just so that, that that's kind of editing screen at the bottom goes or the editing bar at the bottom oh, goes yeah, away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to make that okay. go away. Okay. Go away. Go oh, away. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Now, see the bar at the bottom right that looks like the home indicator? Uh, swipe up on the in Safari, the, the bar there. Oh. Yeah. Now, you should be able to swipe <gasps> up on that. What happened? And that's where you could have multiple. Uh, different slide over apps. So you can drag and drop uh, essentially like whenever you're, if you back out and you had say, say, uh, yeah, there you go. And you wanted to add, I don't know, music or messages or something else as, yeah. as a slide over option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. pick and drag one yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Like Put that. that here. Yeah. Whoa. And now yeah. when I slide up, up, I've got you both can choose of them. between those two. Yeah. What so the it's like what? multitasking. Yeah. Multitasking oh, and slide over. <laughs> is really oh, nice. Wait a cotton pick in minute. So that <laughs> now that is a really nice uh, feature. Let me see. I Oh, uh, good. A nice restart. Is that what that happened? I, did I respring yeah. it or did I reboot it? I think I just resprung it. Okay. So this is important. We want to show that too, that there'll, there'll be issues. Uh, Tap but, notes. Let's see if Notes still has all oh, of the... Oh, does it not have it? Yeah, good. Yay. And you can see both of them there. Yeah, um, yeah. You can also that very so, easily take... That is so um, cool. So I can switch the, back and forth like this. Can I have more than two in here? 
I believe you can have several. I'm not sure. I have not tested the limit of it, but I know you can have more than two for oh, sure. That's great. I have to always be yeah, careful. So, Let's put photos in here too. Right. Yeah. Depending on what you have. Yeah, I don't want to put you, my you, messages. Oh. So there's a photo. So now I can, I have three different things. So this is a very, I think this is a clever way of, of uh, setting up kind of a multitasking system in uh, an iPad. That's really great. That's I'm very excited about that. Look and if that. you ever want to take one of those full screen, I believe you like, so tap on, uh, now, you know, there's the bar at the top in the middle of that. Yeah. Um, you can take that and drag it to the middle of the screen, middle top of the screen. And you should be able to, well, that didn't work. Right. Uh, I have not tested this myself, but it says, um, there's a way to get this to become easily make a slide over app full screen by dragging it to the top. Oh, maybe just, that's, <laughs> maybe just dragging it off the top. Maybe. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, yeah. See, something happened. Well, that's just a photo. I oh, think you're going to drop that into notes. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it not letting you do that? Dragging it to the maybe top. Maybe because I'm in notes. I don't know. Let's try a different one. Let's try. Oh, it. maybe you can. <laughs> this is funny. While you're in that, that. There you go. There we go. You did it. And this there is, I have to be honest, always been my problem with this technique is it's, it's a little finicky, a little hard to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, remember at WWDC when they were demonstrating some of these new gestures, the guy demonstrating them said, oops. Was having issues, uh, yeah. Oops, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I think maybe with practice it'll get easier. Absolutely. I hope so. Um, another, th another thing that makes it easy is, or that makes multitasking better is multiple windows from the same app. So kind of before, oh, if you wanted to say, yeah, oh, right. If you wanted to have two yeah. safaris and side by side, right. now you can do that. Um, which I think, I, I want to say there were some options for safari for sure before, but say you were doing, um, say you were doing uh, pages, you were working in pages right. and you had, you know, sort of one document where you'd collected research and one document where you're trying to do sort of the final formatting for that. Well, that's what you can do with uh, this new multiple windows from the same app option is to be able to take and, and have those right side by side. Another op or example that they give is if you were organizing your files, it's really, there you go. It's really handy to be able. Look, you've got two got windows three. and a slide over. I've got yeah. three safaris open here. This is That's this is cool. really cool. All right, so yeah, th again, this is going to take a little practice. Can I get three? No, I see. I just moved that into the. Uh, That's cool. This is going to take a little practice, but just just this by itself, the ability to run one app, multiple windows. Now the apps will have to support this, so that means it's not going to uh, work with every app it's working with some right now uh right. i don't know if i could oh, yeah. let's see if i can open a second new york times for instance that may actually no this is safari in both cases so uh, apple's apps will certainly do this out of the box and other apps yeah. maybe down the road okay very nice i really like that hands-on tech this week brought to you by grammarly a communication tool that helps people improve their writing to be mistake free clear and effective grammarly premium looks out for spelling grammar and other errors but also offers advanced punctuation information, style within context, conciseness, and readability for different occasions. You don't want to sound like your PhD thesis is a blog post. You want to write for the occasion appropriately, and that's what Grammarly helps you do. Available on multiple browsers and platforms. And right now you can get 20% off your Grammarly premium account today. Go to Grammarly.com slash hot. That's Grammarly.com slash H-O-T for 20% off your Grammarly premium account. What else is new? And uh, let's see. Should I so, play with these new undo and uh, redo gestures. This is this is going to be interesting because I've I've never <laughs> I've never used these before. Um, let's create a new note. Um, you just tap and swipe for for text. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. You can, okay. Uh, okay. Top right. Oh wait. Go ahead and click. If let's, you want a new note, here's a new note. There yeah. you go. Okay. Beautiful. So I can. This is some text. Now, what do I do here? Tap and swipe to uh, select. Yep, no, to select. To select. That's actually huge because this is kind of what you would do with a mouse. And in the old yeah. days, you had to say select and you had to drag these handles. But now you could just do do that. No. Gee, it So that's the problem it, is that it kind of. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, is some of these text. Uh, <laughs> the problem Undo. is they're trying to support both. Oh, there you here go. Here we go. 
Double tap. Okay, so double tap with three fingers. Undo and swipe, swipe left, left with three fingers to undo. Swipe right. Pinch and spread to copy and paste. All right, let's try that. So uh, double tap. Okay, uh, let's. So what I did was I dragged that over here. That's awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. but let's say I don't want to do that. I I <laughs> swipe. What was it? Swipe right with three fingers. <laughs> Why isn't it working? <laughs> yeah, three finger swipe to the left whoa. should be undo. Uh, uh, whoa. Okay, I just did something I didn't want to do. Undo, <laughs> undo, undo. So here's the problem uh, and the complaint that I have. I undoed about it all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> now, how do I redo? Swipe to the right with three fingers. Oh, look at there that. There we go. Oh, nice. Nice. When you're trying to support the original uh, selection, text selection features and the new text selection features, that's where these things get confusing. Yeah. And that's where you do run into the issue. Uh, you should be able to just tap on a piece of text and swipe to select. But sometimes that old select and, and copies, that that screen gets in the way. Because um, it's just supposed to be one tap and then right. swipe. It shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't have to double tap. Okay. Oh, there you go now. You know, this is an example of it's going to take a little practice to get kind of used to it. Um, Absolutely. But, you know. the Another thing that they have that I saw, I think it was um, Steve TS had tweeted about the multi-select gestures. So you can quickly select email messages, files, and folders by tapping with two fingers and dragging. So if you have like a, say you have a list of emails that you don't, you know, you want to mark as red because you've gotten 30 emails from a newsletter. Right. In the mail app, you tap um, the you tap with two fingers on the first one, and then you just drag down, and it selects the whole list of them very easily. So that will work with email messages, files, and folders for now. And I'm sure as more apps support these sort of more involved gestures, then you can do easier uh, multi-select. Nice. Of course, um, as you showed, it's easier to sort of move the cursor around however you yeah, want to. Yeah. Uh, and it's supposed to be good. They call it intelligent selection. So if you come across an address, a phone number, an it email is. address, it seems to and be some yeah, others. Yeah. It's jumping to the word and this is nice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That is better. Yeah. Yeah. You can double tap on they call it like I said intelligent selection. So you can double tap to quickly select an address, a phone number, email address, etc. versus, you know, your regular text. So even if it's, you know, you've got your Eat your address line, which is on multiple lines, right. just a double tap on that could select the whole thing. Uh, so that's the text nice. editing updates. That. Yeah, there. that's really fantastic. Okay, what else? Uh, have you used the quick? Well, they call it Quick Path, um, but the Quick Quick Path keyboard, which is the swipe Quick Swipe keyboard, essentially. Have you used that at all? Uh, I use it on Android all the time, and I love it. So let's let's play with the let's play with that a little bit here. Um, I'll I'll create a new thing. So what I need to do is is uh, uh, oh, you probably have to disconnect from somehow. I have to disconnect this keyboard, and I don't really know how know how to. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So nice. if I type T H now, how does it start? You were you were doing it right. Yeah, you just start swiping. Yeah, Wait, it's not working. Not doing anything. <laughs> that's that's maybe because I'm in paste. Um, oh, that that might be why. And it might be getting confused because you still have the keyboard. Well, there we go. Wow, this is very upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I love swipe, and if you've used the S W Y P E keyboard, which you can install, uh, they went out of business, but, or I don't know, they're not around anymore. But this is a really, I think, a great way to type. It's funny because Ken Koshenda, who was, in fact, we've had him on Triangulation. Megan interviewed him, and he was one of the original designers of the iPhone keyboard. He said we looked at that when we were designing the iPhone keyboard, and we decided no one wanted it, so we didn't put it in. So here it is, more than ten years later, and. Apparently, it's been a huge success on the Android side. Uh, maybe yeah, Apple so finally said, oh, okay, we should do it. Because I, I personally, I find it a much easier way to type. Less so, 
and maybe it's not on the iPad because it's it, less so on the uh, it definitely iPad works on the, the iPhone. It does. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. I'm using it there right now. Uh, just I was doing a test to now, make sure. Isn't there it also works. a new smaller keyboard? This is really going to push it. Uh, it's called the the floating keyboard. Yeah. So if you pinch to shrink the quick type keyboard. Oops. Let me start again. Get back into typing. There's also I can go here and select it. Oh, nice. And there it is. And this yeah. This can so it's go almost like. Anywhere. Uh, a little iPad, I mean, iPhone keyboard. Yeah. Now, maybe now this one that does that. does that have the swipe? Yeah. Yes, it does. It does. Huzzah. Now, I don't, maybe that was uh, user error. So, the idea is you, it does the best it can to figure out why you did that, uh, what you were what you were going for. What's your word you but were it, going but for? It, but it actually does a pretty uh, good job. And uh, I. so, this is cool. So, I'm not sure I want a really tiny keyboard. On the other hand, if I'm swiping... Let's see if it knows your name. Hi, Mike. Uh, a oh yeah, I think it. It's spelled oh, with a K. Yeah. It's close. Well, that is how it's spelled. That's how it's oh, spelled. Oh, it's how it's spelled. Okay. Yeah. It yep. knew. I didn't. It this <laughs> exactly knew. is Leo saying hello to you. See, I'm getting some real confidence here because it's doing a great job. Auto corrects doing. This is great. This is going to be that a huge is really, improvement. I'm impressed. Yeah, and look, and you can put I that think, keyboard anywhere, which is really nice. I think another really thing nice. that's important to note about this is it's supporting English, simplified Chinese, Spanish, German, French, Italian, and Portuguese to start. All those languages are supported by the Quick Path keyboard. So I think that's pretty impressive that they've got that many languages with the, the new Quick Path typing uh, to begin. And... Um, something else with the keyboard, this is kind of a small feature, but I find it fascinating. Uh, dictation will automatically detect which language a user is speaking nice. now. So that will be chosen from the keyboard language. Let me try this. Let me see. Bonjour, Monsieur Micah. <laughs> it, it, didn't, it didn't understand French, but I haven't installed French. However, look how fast it's dictating. And this is the new on-device dictation, right? I mean, this is super fast. Uh, and very accurate. So I'm very happy about that. You see how it's adjusting uh, as I go? Period. As it goes, yeah. yeah. It's getting context and doing a better job wow. of, of I, understanding. I have to say, I will be using this one a lot. Because to me, dictation is could, a lot easier than typing. I agree. When it works, I agree. Yeah. Uh, something I could totally see you using uh, is the new option for external drive support yeah. on so iOS, including server-wise. What? Yeah, SMB. SMB, which is the Windows uh, thing. I'll tell you what. Let me just, I don't know what's going to happen. I've never done this before. <laughs> I am reaching now into my super secret backpack. Ooh. Pull out uh, something. I don't know what. A USB drive. Let's do it and, uh -huh. uh, and see, what, see what happens. I haven't tried this. I'm excited because yeah. I have not, I've done the, I've connected uh, to a local server over SMB. I have not plugged in a, a hard drive or. So or SMB USB is, uh, is the traditional uh, Windows networking technology. Apple's kind of abandoned its Apple file protocol. Um, but SMB is widely used in, in the world. So that means you could see a network drive. How do I just out of curiosity, how do I see a network drive? Well, uh, go you files? go to files. Go into the files app. Yeah, that's where you'll start. And then uh, at the bottom, you choose browse. Okay. And then um, in low, let me see. I can't see the more, loca I more sure. locations, yeah, maybe. So tap. No, you go ahead and you tap, click done there. Okay. Um, and then tap the three dots in the top right next to browse. So bra oh. three dots and then you choose connect, connect to server. Connect to server. Holy cow. Now, I don't happen to have an SMB server publicly available on this network, but that is really cool. Yes. Now, I'm going to try plugging in a... Now, for one thing, the one issue, though, right away is I don't have... I have to find a Type-C connector. Oh, USB Type-C adapter is, or something. This is going to take a while because I do have it all, but I just have to go through my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my entire bag to find all the connections I need here. But I do have an adapter. Let's see. I think I have an adapter here. Yeah, I do. Okay. So there's oh, a Type-C adapter. Cocoon. Yeah. Aren't these great? The grids? Yes. Yeah. Grid it. Um, so let's pick. I don't know if this will be readable because uh, it's probably some file format that Apple doesn't know about. But let's just try. So I'm going to now. Oh, this is exciting. 
This is exciting. I've not done this yet. Plug a thumb drive, which in the past it would just go, I don't know what that is. It may still do that because who knows what the file format is on here. Um, what would I see? Linux data. Linux data. It did. It popped right up. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, Look sweet mystery that. of life. I have found you. <laughs> so that, that, is, that, is pretty, uh, that is pretty impressive. That is, uh, and this is, by the way, this is not a uh, Mac file format disk. This is a Linux formatted USB key. So that's that's wild. Yeah, that's wild, man. Let's try it. I gotta do. I gotta do another another one. Just, yeah. Wow. You have like a. I have a lot of them, and uh, and all kinds <laughs> of and all the all the different file formats. I don't even know what this is going to be. Arch Who ISO. It's yeah. a. So look at that. Look at that. Okay, this is, so normally uh, what I would do, I guess I could do it if I had a, a card reader, I could take photos off my camera. Heck yeah. Oh, man. Okay, now get ready. Look at the spoils. Tell of me, John, when I can desk. plug it in. <laughs> I got a memory card. I got a uh, audio. I got a, yeah, I know. The desk is full of crap now. And this is, ah, yes. Do you have enough? Do you have enough slack? Oh, boy, I hear noise, so let's plug it in. I'll, I'll unplug the headphone jack. We'll get a little buzz from there. Okay, so, yeah, look at that. Oh, Leica. Look. Now, what's cool, this is, this, this is raw, so I am opening it up. And one thing that they said, and I don't know, maybe uh, uh, Lightroom has not yet been updated for that. One thing that they did say is that you'd be able to uh, import directly into Lightroom uh, I don't. I don't know if. Uh, uh, well, I can open it, right? I'm opening it. Mm -hmm. I can save the image right there. Okay. Should be uh, like uh, uh, Lightroom. You know, let me l launch Lightroom. Maybe Lightroom has to say, "Oh, you're running iOS 13. Maybe I should. You know, maybe I could just import this." Well, Pixelmator Photo can directly import. Yeah, and so now it's not seeing Lightroom. Choose camera roll. Yeah, that, there might be an option for files or something. Uh -huh. mm. Wait a minute. No, that's something, that's something else. So, yeah, I bet you this has just not been updated uh, quite yet. But the fact that I can just plug it in like this, uh, load in RAW, I guess I could do that with the Apple camera adapter. So that's not something new. But any, uh, I can even, well, you don't want to go crazy. Let's go. Should we go crazy? Can, oh my goodness! He's gonna put go two crazy. in there. I got two. Oh boy! No, it doesn't. Oh, like. that's a, that's because it's a it's because it's a uh, it's I, I think it's weird. ZFS. It's some weird file format. Let me let me use a different. Uh, <laughs> One of your thirty USB drives. I got many drives USB got drives here. Let's just see. And they're and they're really basically it's just stuff I found in the parking lot. So I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, here. good. No Gotta kidding, kidding. Uh, done. So that's reading it right off the thing. Yeah, some of these are probably kind of funky. Let's do the one I read before because I know that works. This is yeah. really exciting. This is really exciting. So now, now your, SP, your uh, SD isn't showing up over there. Oh, yeah. Maybe Did I have something to, come unplugged? Or? Yeah, maybe I have to replug. Or maybe I just broke it. <laughs> 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 Maybe I just pushed it a little too, too hard. hard. Aww. Well, anyway, we 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 demonstrated the uh, the the fact that this does now read uh, USB drives, which is pretty darn exciting. Any other features you think people are going to be very excited about with? Uh, uh, um, I think it's kind of a nerd feature, but people are super excited about having a download manager in Safari. Um, so and and you... and desktop Safari, huge. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh huge. yeah. Okay. I was like, what do you mean? Yes. So now it used to be kind of annoying. You'd go to different sites on your iPad, and they would always lock you into that. Uh, bad, in my opinion, view on such a big yeah. screen yeah. of a mobile version of the site. Now it is going to show you the <sighs> desktop version of the site for the iPad's large display. It's great. It it It's nice to be able to just go to a site and have full control. And I tested this on some things that, uh, some sites that insisted in the past, no matter what I tried to do to try to trick it, it would insist on showing me the mobile site. And I was able to get the full true site uh, in 
in this new version of iOS, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, you know, the big one for me is Google Drive, which we use all the time on all of our shows and has historically not worked well uh, with Safari Mobile. Um, and it works, as far as I can tell, beautifully uh, now. By the way, <laughs> I can never figure this out. How do I get rid of this second thing? I can yep, you did it. Just like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. And actually, I think that's a little bit changed in iOS 13. I think it was a little bit harder in iOS 12. It, it was so. really hard. I could I could yeah, never get rid I of always, it. <laughs> I didn't ever want to use Split View because I was worried I couldn't get rid of the second one. Um, so let's just open the MacBreak Weekly Rundown. This is a Google Sheet. Historically not worked very well in Safari. Uh, I, think this is, I think this is really going to be... A big improvement. I can zoom now. Oh yeah, this is this is this is desktop Safari. This works as well as it does on your Mac. Yes, One other yes. thing that's brand new that's I think going to be interesting. Find my, hmm. <laughs> just my, no find my find, find so, my anything. Find my, apparently anything. So <laughs> this is this is pretty awesome. I can I can uh, I can see you know share my location. I can see all my devices. Um, I can see where my Apple Watch is. It's right here. Look at that. Hey, it's on my hand. Wow. Look at that. But I can even see friends because they've combined uh, Find My Friends. I could play a sound out of my watch. Oh, man. Yep, it is. Just missed that. Uh, I could get directions to my watch. <laughs> so, What's new in Maps? So going through Maps, if I just go around the corner, there's my watch. That's pretty oh, good. That's pretty cool. <laughs> This is, I do like it. This a is lot, fine, you know? my and it's it's just everything. Uh, you know, my MacBook Air is uh, at home. My iPhone 10 is here. I mean, this is this is fantastic. Um, There's been some. There have been some uh, some rumors that potentially uh, Apple could introduce more Find My options in the future. So they've talked about Apple possibly doing something like um, a a you know chip that you could include uh, in your wallet or something like that, that you could then find your wallet if it got lost. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I do like this sort of combination of all these features. Um, I wasn't a huge find my <laughs> blank, uh, find my friends user in the past. And it wasn't until um, my partner uses it all the time. And so I started using it. And it's really handy. Like if you go on a road trip or something like that and you just want to let people who care about you know, hey, I didn't go into a ditch and I'm still like on the highway awesome. somewhere. Yeah. They, yeah. They can check in and see that you're A-OK. -okay. Uh, I like it for that. So it's also awesome there are nice because if I want to know uh, if my son is at work, I could just tap Henry Laporte. And find out, oh, yeah, he's at work. <laughs> oh, good. Isn't that awesome? Isn't what that else is awesome about this is those location features, I continue, I, I guarantee you that we'll continue to see integrations between those specific location features and the home uh, automation stuff and home kit. So you could have it set up oh, to where yeah, yeah, when yeah. a certain person gets home, then this happens provided that nobody is home right now yeah. or provided that this, this, and this, yeah. that's going to be really neat because there already are some of those location features built in, like when the first person arrives, then turn on the lights, et cetera. All right. Let me sh push all this stuff out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's iOS 13. And uh, I have to say, uh, you saw a few things that happened. We had a resprung with a springboard reloaded. Uh, asphalt does not run. Um, so th that's something to consider if you're going to put it on a main device. On the other hand, if you have an iPad Pro, you may say just, I don't care because I have to have those features now. I mean, just, just some of these features... Uh, for photography, for me, this is a revolution. I'm going to be thrilled, thrilled. And my question for you, Leo. Yeah. Dark mode. Are you an always run dark mode kind of person well, or are you a scheduled dark let's mode go, person? Let's go look at that. So uh, uh -huh. that is also in uh, Catalina has been for a while. We should look at the um, this, the new settings in here because some of these are, are a little bit oh, different. Oh, yeah. There are lots of fun new yeah. settings. Uh, anything in particular? Where is dark mode? It's probably in display. Display and brightness. Yeah. yeah. So there's three choices. I can. I actually. I haven't yet tried dark. Maybe I'll do dark from for a while and see. But there's also automatic, which is cool. At night, it's in the dark mode. Uh, in the daytime, it's in the light mode, as you can see. And you can get to choose sunrise to sunset, or custom schedule, or whatever you want. I think I'm just gonna go dark. Let's just 
Let's just That's see. What I... Let's just see. And the night shift is still on here. Mm -hmm. uh, what will happen, of course, you'll notice immediately with dark mode is while Apple apps support it, that other apps may not yet support it. And so let's see if Moleskine Flow supports it. This is a pretty new app. It's a design award winner, but no. But actually, that makes sense. It shouldn't, right? Because your paper is white. It shouldn't all yeah. of a sudden. And plus, you can, you can choose a dark paper in yeah. that app yeah. anyway. So. so I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, Safari, what does it look like in dark mode? It's got a dark bar on the top. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, if you go to... Um, oh goodness, go to see, well, clock. if you want to, Clock's you can go always been dark mode. <laughs> how about, right. How about uh, we can do calendar? How about let's do let's do yeah, calendar. calendar's a good choice. Calendar. This is the Apple calendar. Oh, uh -huh. it's so dark. It's darker than dark. It's the darkest dark. <laughs> None more dark. None more darker. That's pretty dark. Wow. It is. I don't yeah. know if I'm a dark mode fan or not. Uh, as you can see, I, I use I, a kind of a dark uh, wallpaper. So maybe I am. Maybe I am. You do. <gasps> maybe I. Oh, dark mode. You see, even in the darkness, Micah Sargent even is still a light in the darkness. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> dark mode here. We'll have lots more, I'm sure, uh, in future iOS today's about iOS 13. Uh, I have not put it on my iPhone. Maybe we could find somebody who is really brave to put it on their iPhone. We could see what's uh, different. But you can see already iPad OS is going to make a big difference to how people I think so. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.